I'm down. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Ready? Okay. Cool. So, look, wow. Take it away with the vowels. Yeah. Ah. Eight. Eat. Oat. And oot. All right. So, here's what I... Your, your ot, oat, and oot are all good. Here's what I'm hearing with your, your, your et and your it. The et you're saying as sort of an eight, right? Instead of et, as in vet or sensor. And then your, your it you're saying is like a, an I, Y, right? An e, I'm hearing eat. So it's it, right? It. Yeah, it. Yeah. It. All right. All right. Go for the diphthongs. I don't have a good list of those any place. So I will do what I can remember and people can pick up beyond that. There is ow, oi, yep. ew, uh -huh. I-W, ew, There's one. Yeah, brain is going dead now. That's okay. Um, here, let me try. I'm gonna try doing the. Um, there was a thing where I could do a like a a board. Let me see here. Uh -huh. How do I do this? There we go. I figured it out. All right. See so, you. You got ow, I, A, E. All right, so give those a shot. Okay, there's ow, mm -hmm. A. Oh, try that one again. Uh, it's not A. Mm -mm. No. I. I, 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 right? I, I, as in I. All right, try the third one. A, mm -hmm. E, uh huh, and OI. Yeah, great, cool. Um, who wants to? Great job. Majka, who wants to take me through the consonants? Anybody? Right lit. Go for it. All right, got it. I'm muted. All right, well, we'll give it a try. Bai, chai, dai. Yeah. Hai, hai, jai, lai, mai, nai, pai. Kai, kai, rai, try, tie, bye, why, yai. Mm -hmm. All right, make sure I got that list right. Uh, I think you skipped over oh. N G and P. Oh, nine. Uh huh. And pi. Good job. Cool. Maj. That's right. Great. Super. Cool. Um, that's, that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, I, I hear that, I hear your chai and your chai really improving. Uh, yesterday was, um, the kep hop and during the kep hop, it was just me and, and Rakle, and we were, uh, talking and, um, there were a couple of places where, uh, the, I was, the chai and the chai were kind of getting mixed and then the chai also kind of sounded like a chai. Um, which is really important in Klingon because you have words like kok and kok and koch and hok. And then sometimes even you have dialects where this and this get turned around, right? So this turns, uh, chai turns into, into a, whoa, what's up with this? Into a chai, right? Or uh, rather, other way around. 
uh, chi turns into a chi. That's that's really advanced, so we're not we're not going to go into that. But that's that happens in Klingon uh, in some dialects. Cool. Um, who wants to? Um, so uh, the homework. I'm just going to pull up the homework. The homework was um, to uh, go through uh, the first three lessons of Klingon the easy-ish way. Uh, did did most people do that or? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I can claim to have watched them, although I really didn't get much out of the third one by the time I got there. Oh, okay. Cool. There just wasn't time to absorb one and two, and so it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, memorization is something I need to physically pound into my head. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did everybody sign up for um, Memrise or some? Yes. Uh, similar service. Cool. Great. Yeah. yeah, I recommend doing that at least five minutes every day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I find it interesting that memorizes vocabulary and the click on the easiest way vocabulary, the sequence is very different. And memorizing memorized vocabulary doesn't help you learn easy cling on the easiest way because they're different sets of vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is to be expected, but it's right. still a hassle. Right. I, I usually, I think, you know, it's like good to use like complementary um, thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are some things that are in Klingon the easiest way that aren't uh, you know, covered in the memorize and then vice versa. Um, cool. And then the other part of it was um, to read through uh, chapter three of the Klingon dictionary, which is all about nouns, right? Uh, Klingon has three parts of speech, verbs, nouns, and everything else. And uh, we covered the uh, nouns bit. Um, so yeah, so uh, it starts off pretty simple, uh, you know, um, Klingon has um, <laughs> what are referred to here as, you know, simple nouns. So you have words like kich, which means destruction, and gosh, which means target, right? These are pretty simple. Um, and then, but, that, but then you also have, you know, more complex nouns. Um, so an example of this would be like a compound noun, right? We have these in English too. So you have the word Joel, which means um, transport beam. <laughs> yes, very, very useful in, in, modern, in, in modern day. Um, and then you have the word pop, which means room. And then this adds up to make Joel pop, which means transporter room, right? And then you have other things like this, like um, chow, which means permission or permit. And lok, which means code. So a chop lok, which is a, a set phrase. It's not a comp compound noun, but it, it is a it is two nouns stacked on top of each other. Um, what would that be? Does anybody know? Permission. Password. Yeah, password. Password. Yeah. Password. Yeah. Okay. So you know things like this. Um, all right. Then we have uh, the wit, all right? Now, we're not gonna get into verb suffixes, um, but this is one of them. Um, and it's very common to see this uh, on verbs. Uh, can anybody tell me what this suffix means? That's the doer. doer. Yeah, it's the one, one who does. Yeah, it's an equivalent to the ER suffix in English, right? So one that does X, right? And so, can also mean my, if they're capable of speech. Right, right, right. Um, but in this context, it's uh, it's the doer suffix. So, um, so for nouns? Be, I'm sorry. For nouns or verbs? For for verbs. So this, oh, right, okay. this, this is the first. So this is the first thing. This only goes on to verbs. If it is on a noun, then it's it means something different, um, which is what. Uh, Riley is saying um, uh, it, it's a possessive suffix when it's on a noun. But here it's, it turns a verb, in, it's a nominalizer, so it turns a verb into a noun, um, uh, a noun that does the verb. Um, so somebody, can somebody give me a verb that you learned in Klingon the easy-ish way? Memorization. I don't remember if they did uh, but that would be one. Yeah, okay. So we got shuv, which means fight. fight. 
Yeah, fight. Uh, yeah, fight. And then you got shu wit, which means fighter. Fighter. Yeah. Uh, give me another one. I just happen to remember poge. Ah, poge, mm-hmm. which is analyze, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, be careful so... when you're with your J. It sounds like a it sounds like a like a soft J, like in rouge. Poge. There you go. Yeah. Which means so. And so we'd have uh, Pojwi, which would be yeah. analyst. Yeah, exactly. Great, now I know my job title. <laughs> yeah. So we got that. Cool. Um, can somebody give me another one? Well, if I could ask a question. Sure. Um, I, I posted this up to you uh, a few weeks back. Uh-huh. This thing here, if I can get it. Okay, I was, I was asking what the name of an acid slug would be. Uh-huh. And I think we came up with pay charquit. Uh-huh. And I, I was using this thing in uh, a Dungeons and Dragons episode where uh, these things actually were able to speak Klingon or understand it. So I, I, was, I was trying to teach myself that way. But is, what, would, um, what would the wit on charwit mean in this situation right so this is it's the exact same thing it's it means doer one that does, does can okay. anybody tell me what char means no wit uh how would how would wit come along on the end of char just as in user of acid type thing or no no, no it is or, one, or slug it the is, slug is is the the snail yeah it is one that does something so um when it's on a state of verb it's something that is that thing so um uh, something that has that quality. So there's, okay. um, so you have char, which means to be slimy. Slimy. Okay. So char wit Slimer. Is one that Look. is one that is slimy. Okay, right. got it. You have this as well. Go quit. That's a red one. Mm-hmm. Uh, go quit. Lucky one. Fortunate yeah, one. Fortunate one. Yeah. Luckier. Fortunate. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Yes. All right. Um, great. And then you could even have um, compound words with like, so there's the there's the word tidwit. Um, yeah, tidwit home. Right. So this is a boarding party, but this is um, this is a compound noun that's made up of group of boarders. different parts. I'm sorry. A group of boarders. Yeah. So tidge, board, and then we have wit, and then a home is a group, All right? So a tidge, wit, home is board, one who does boarding, and then home, right? Ah, darn it. The stupid thing doesn't want to. Great. All right. Then we have uh, these other sorts of complex nouns, um, you know, ones where uh, it's not exactly clear that it is a compound noun, but it's, you know, so there's this thing, edge dope, which this is a older form, right? <laughs> In the fiction of, of Klingon being a natural language, this is an older form um, of the word dooge, right? And edge, for some reason, means like star. So you also see this in edge yoke, which is the word for Starfleet. Edge yoke, starship, so on and so forth. Cool. All right. So now for the funky part, suffixes. Who can tell me how many noun suffixes there are? How many, um, sorry, not how many, uh, how many types of noun suffixes there are? Five types. There's five types, that's right. Um, and why is it that we, um, why is it that we class them one, two, uh, by, by number? Can anybody tell me? Because they go in a certain order Yeah. You add them to a word. Right, so if these all come on the same noun, then they're, uh, then they're going to um, come in exactly this order. It's ungrammatical. It, so let's um, let's 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 take a noun um, like shore, which means. Can anybody tell me? Tree. Tree. Yeah. Oh. Shore. Oh, verb. Never mind. Yeah. Shore. So we can add on the suffix ah, 
which means what? Great tree. Yeah, great. Um, augmentative. The the um, really yeah. important. Yeah, the really important tree. It doesn't necessarily mean big. Um, it can it it could potentially mean that, but it, not necessarily. But um, but if I heard shor a, then I would probably imagine some sort of big tree. Um, can somebody give me another noun suffix, uh, type two noun suffix? May. Cook. Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, this, this is the plural uh, ones. See, even, oh. even if you've been speaking Klingon a long time, you kind of uh, get some, some of them mixed up. All right, so yeah, you got may and then type three. Coke. 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 Yeah. All right. So let's just analyze. We got shor a major tree, may, which adds a plural element, right? Then we have coke, which is a qualitative statement. So we're making um, a comment on what we think of the tree, right? So we think that it's a so-called tree. So um, there's an element of like, oh, one could call it that, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, type four. Raj. 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 All right, so y'all's so-called major trees. Okay, and then a type five. Doc. Doc. Cool. So, at y'all's major so-called trees, um, if you were to put any of these in any other order, so if we were to say Coke, if we were to say something like this, I think my head would explode. <laughs> um, you know, or like this, you know, it's like, oh, geez, no. Um, yeah, no, I wouldn't even know what to do with this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Klingon speakers wouldn't either. Uh, so this 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 is completely ungr ungrammatical. You have to do it exactly in the order. And you know, if you get a suffix, a couple of suffixes mixed up, then um, you know, like I think this is a common one to do, where you put the qualitative, the qualification suffix in front um, in front of the the plural suffix instead of you know this is the right way to say it. But you'll see, you know, something like this happen a lot. Um, but it's not grammatical. Cool. All right, so let's just walk through them. Um, I, does does everybody? Can somebody go ahead and shout out the the first two um, suffixes? So the type one noun suffixes. First off, what do they do? Magnify and and attenuate. Yeah. Exactly. And go ahead and shout those out for me. Oi. Say it again. Oi. Ah. Ah. Well, ah is one. I also say oi is a home. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's true. That's true. All right. I always, I, I have the ebook version, so I'm not looking into the addendum. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oi. Oi is definitely one. Um, and then the other one is. Um, home. Yeah. Okay. So Riley, you brought up the oi suffix. So tell me what that one does. Uh, it's a term of endearment. Yeah, it's an endearment. It's it's a cute suffix. So um, can you give me an example um, of a word with oi on it? So if you use it uh, like with father, which is bob. Yeah. You bob. bob oi. Bob oi. Yeah, daddy. All right, great. And you could also do this for shoshoi, mommy. You could say um, et mamoi, uh, auntie, right? Um, you could say irnech oi, uncle, you know. This is a, a word for uncle. There are two words for uncle, but this is a word for uncle. Uncle oi, yeah. Um, all right, so on and so forth. So endearment, okay. Oh goodness, I'm getting texts. Go ahead and tell me what um, 
what ah is all about. Ah, meaning enlargement, right? Augmentative. As in kept up. Yeah, huh? augmentative. We, it's preferable to say augmentative because a lot okay. of the mistake that a lot of beginners make is they think that it just means bigger. Um, okay, augmentative, okay. Yeah. Kep, ah. Yeah, so you have the word kep, which means? Meeting. Yeah, a meeting. So then a kep, ah is? Large meeting. Major meeting. Yeah, major meeting or a convention or, yeah. Major meeting, convention. Yeah. So this is the augmentative suffix. Okay, okay, gotcha. It helps to think of it uh, uh, as major. I always think of like, in my head, if I'm, I don't really translate in my head anymore, but when I started out, I would translate it in my head as major such and such. Okay. Major tree, major meeting, major whatever. Sure. And similarly, um, hmm. the last suffix is home. Home, yeah, and it is a diminutive. So similarly, I tend to think of this as minor, right? Um, somebody give me an example with a, Get a home. Yeah. yeah, pep again, meeting. Pep home, the minor meeting, a small meeting. This could be like a meeting with like two or three people, you know, mm -hmm. um, or you know, just a. Two or three people, a minor meeting. Cool. Great. All right. Somebody tell me what type two is all about. Plural? About in indicating the plural form. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the number of things. Um, all right. So I'm going to ask y'all a question. What does Yash mean? Officer. Officer. Yeah, it's small. Uh, sorry, it's an uh, officer. Um, so Yash um, is officer, but what else could it mean? It has a. It has a, another potential officer, meaning. Officers. Yep. So every noun, or most every noun, <laughs> in Klingon, can either be singular or plural. Um, if it's if it's not marked for number, All right. so Yash can be officer or officers, a shuvit, which is what again? Fighter, warrior. Yeah, warrior. fighter, warrior. Um, yeah, I'm gonna write warrior because that's the more. Could also be warrior or warriors. Um, Desh, which which means what? Arm. Arm. Yeah, arm could be either arm or arms and um you which means what planet. planet planet could either be planet or planets okay simple enough klingon has how many number suffixes three, three. three. Okay. um keb -o. tell me what those are oh and mate yeah, good job, Machka. Cool. Why in the world does Klingon have three plural suffixes? Different, different grammatical types of genders. nouns. Yeah, different types of nouns. Um, uh, let's see, I can't see everybody here, so I'm gonna, where are y'all? There we go. Um, Caitlin, <laughs> can you tell me what, um, can you tell me what put is for? So put is for the pluralization of basically like sentient language capable individuals. Yeah. So cool. yeah. So that gets almost into like philosophical debates. Like if I'm looking at a group of androids, like one person could say like uh, may. Yeah. Almost as an insult, like, no, these aren't sentient, they're just items, whereas another person could go, you know, uh, yeah. to indicate, no, these are different life, but still kind of artificial life. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, this is one of these things that um, it differs from speaker to speaker as to what constitutes um, a poop noun. Um, 
you know, people are gonna have their different opinions on what should be a poop noun. I see a lot of people spending a lot of time like stressing about, am I using the right number suffix? And um, the example that I like to bring up is um, there's this thing called a karyok, which is, um, which is kind of like a parrot um, sort of bird. And it, like a parrot, um, can, can speak, uh, can, can produce noise and, 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 and say words but um, it, it's only repeating words. So um, Maltz, um, who if you don't know who Maltz is, Maltz uh, is, <laughs> is the Klingon from Star Trek III, um, and he is the fictitious Klingon, excuse me, the very real Klingon who lives in Mark Okran's basement, who gives Mark Okran information about the Klingon. <laughs> when he yeah. traveled back in time uh, in Star Trek IV, and then uh, was stranded in 20th century San Francisco. This is all canonical. <laughs> so, um, so Maltz, when he, when he gave information about different birds, he gave information about karyuk. And karyuk, he said, he personally would say karyuk may. So karyoks with the may. But he said that some Klingons would say karyuk pu. So this just goes to show that it just depends on who you're talking to. All right, now that we've talked about May, can somebody... I have a question. Yes. Go uh, ahead. May be uh, who? Will they, would, be the, would they be pu or may? Because they hardly, can hardly speak. Or be they, so, yeah. so, so this is a good point. So who is pu? So who, for y'all who don't know, who is a baby? And rupu is the correct way to say babies. And the reason is, um, even if somebody were, um, were mute, so they couldn't speak, so a jat lach bet wit. Speak, um, can, not, one who doesn't. So this is somebody who's mute, a mute person. The plural of this would still be pu if we're talking about a person, if we're talking about a, a thing that can't speak, right, because this could be either, um, then it would be may. But if it's a human being who can't speak, then it's still poo, because in principle, they can speak, right? They're a human, and therefore, in theory, they can speak, right? And so who, it's the same thing. Eventually, they're gonna be able to speak. They have the, they have the, uh, they have vocal cords, they're just not, able to string together words. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think also that the point is not just to speak, it's a capable of language. Yeah. So there are other types of language too. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So there's sign language, there's, but you know, even if a baby can't um, necessarily do sign language, but they have hands and they can, they eventually, their brains are going to be able to put together words and, um, and understand grammar. So that's that's what it's all about. So it's more about capacity than current skill. Right. Okay. All right. So now that we've talked about poop in May, let's, let's let's talk about May. What what is May all about? Uh, uh, Tiago. May is for everything that is not capable of language and is not body parts. Yep. Not capable of language. And not a body part, right? So a cargo may could potentially be right. We talked about how that might not be the case. Um, and uh, let's think. What's another? What's another noun? Oh, we could say your may, right? So planets. Okay. And then do. Do is for body parts. Yeah. Body parts. So this is in my name, right? So dash is either arm or arms, and dash do is arms, right? Oosh, which means leg or legs. Oosh do, legs. Min, eye. Min do, eyes. Now, 
we're just going to talk very briefly about what happens when you place may onto something that's normally a poo or or do noun. You're poetic. Also um, slightly, it's also slightly insulting. Potentially, potentially, but really more what it is, is... Um, it means that something is scattered all over the place, yeah. physically. It means something, something is um, scattered all about, right? Um, so scatter something. All right, so um, if, we, if we were to say dash do, and you were to cut off that do, you have dash may, then this means arms scattered all over the place. Oops, it is. Right? Um, I don't know. What's another one? Pukme. Pukme, yeah. For I, example. Yeah, pukme. I think of this one when I go to the store because kids run in front of me and, like, uh, can't, can't get away. Child, child care. Children child care. all over the place, right? Yichme. Yichme does not carry the um, the connotation of scattered all over the place because it's already a may. It's not, there's okay. not really gotcha. a way to say that except for to say dot, which means everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if it's already a may, it doesn't it doesn't carry this meaning. But if it's a poop or do, then it does. Okay. I I have a question. Go for it. Because uh, it's like something that I remember, so I had to, I don't know if I'm like, trying, I have to, I'm looking at the ebook right now uh, from the dictionary. It's written here that the suffix may cannot be used with body parts, but it can be in like poetry, for example. Where, where are you here? Uh, the suffix may. Yep. It's written here that it cannot be used well, let's just say that word. Um, it cannot be, hey, yeah, it's 19 of my, yes, uh, it yes. cannot be, you're right, part. yeah, it, it should be noted, however, that Klingon poets often violate this yeah. grammatical rule, mm. you're, and you're then, right. like, one may and everything, which is but, my comment about being poetic, yeah, so, yeah. so you're totally right, this, this, um, thank you for reminding me of that, the, so, you know, the, the regular form of jot, loop, so jot is a tongue, and do is tongues. Jot may is not really done, um, tongues all over the place. But um, some of you might know a, a long time ago in the early 2000s, um, early 90s, early 2000s, there was a Klingon poetry publication, and it was jot may. And the, the reason why it's called this was because of this little um, grammatical note in the Klingon dictionary, it says it's really only a poetic thing. Yeah. Um, so tongue scattered all over the place. Um, you might probably wouldn't say that um, normally, but that's a, you're taking poetic license. Yeah. But in that case, if you want to say that there are arms scattered, scattered all over the place, uh, like in a normal conversation, would you use would you have to use a verb scatter or something like that? I don't know. I don't know the verb, but you'd say dot. It's the same thing as as the yich. Dot bichtach. So we're gonna get into what the heck this means and why we have this on here later. But you would say this dot bichtach desh e. Dot bichtach yich e. Right. Dot means everywhere. And you might even add a nadev, which means here, everywhere, or sorry, here, everywhere, they continuously, arms, and then you need this for, a, for saying that one thing is another thing. But if you wanted to, you could say this. It's just, you're being a little fanciful. All right. Um, one last of the couple of dozen people that speak Klingon well enough, if you said Deshme, would they understand what you're talking about or would they think yeah. you were being stupid? Nope, they would understand what you're talking about. Because okay. again, it's, it's, and it says here, it says, thus, um, 
Thus forms such as clone may, so nostrils scattered all about, do occur. Um, until the subtle nuances of such constructions are firmly grasped, however, it is suggested that students of Klingon stick to the rules. Um, so, cool. All right, and before we move on to type three, let's just talk about um, the nouns, the very few, excuse me, the very few nouns that actually don't take plural suffixes. Okay, so all of these nouns are already plural. And what I mean by that is that they, they already mean something, they already have a meaning that is plural. So we have right, which means what? Targets. 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 We have cha, which means what? Torpedoes. Torpedoes. Chuidach. Yeah, I'll give this my thrusters. Yeah, again, don't really use that one often, but. <laughs> Pashlor. Sucks. Yes. And mope. Plates. Plates. Yeah, that's right. So, so the thing about all of these is that they're quite odd. They have completely different forms in the plural and in the singular. So in the plural, target is gauche. Singular Torpedo peng. is peng. Singular thruster is vidge. Singular sock is tupmit. Tupmit. The singular plate is jingba. Yeah, jingba. Yeah. Okay, but all of these have their own distinct plural form, which are never going to be taking. Um, which are never going to take uh, the plural suffixes. However, and the thing about these is also that they are grammatically singular. So this will come a, a back around later, but mope, it's better, it's, it's better to think of it as like a group of plates because um, later on you're gonna, when we start learning prefixes and stuff, um, it's going to be useful to think of it as grammatically singular rather than, uh, you know, the plural of its, uh, its singular counterpart, right? So, so both of these are singular, grammatically speaking, but this one talks about um, a, a multitude of something. Does that make any sense? Yeah. That kind of like is countable, it, uh, countable nouns? I'm sorry? Is that kind of like countable and uncountable nouns? Like whether you have a less of something or more of something? I mean, more or fewer? Or like water versus drops? It's not, it's not exactly that what's going on. But it's, you know, it's like I said, it's cha is like a group, a group of, of, of torpedoes. Um, so, but, you know, similar to the poop and the doop nouns, these can also take on the may. Uh, sorry, the, the singular versions can take on the may, right? Um, but it just means something a bit different and it means scattered all over the place again. So dosh may means targets scattered, right? Um, it would, this is, this is okay to say. It just means this. It does not mean targets. It means targets scattered. This is okay to say. This, this is not um, okay to say. And if it were okay to say, um, it, it's, it's not known if you would be able to say that, but it says here that they can't take um, plural, plural suffixes. So I'm just gonna go with that. Um, it, would, it would probably mean something of like groups of uh, targets, right? But 
don't say that. <laughs> Just say Doshme or right. right. Okay, cool. All right, let's talk about type three. Let's move on. What, uh, Matt, tell me what type three is all about. Uh, type three are possessions. No, they're, oh. they're um, qualifiers. Yeah, qualification. And what, what does qualification mean? State of opinion or, or, or of, of knowledge of the person talking about it. Yeah, yeah, um, that's, that's exactly right. Um, so can you tell me the first one of those? Coke. Yeah. So-called. Yep. So so-called. You might there's not. Yep, there's not. Which means what? Definite. Right. So if you see something, if you see a dosh, so a target, you say, ah, that's a dosh not. Definite. I, that is what is definitely uh, a target. I'm sure that that's a target. Dosh not. Okay. Next. I don't remember the third one. Okay. Okay. Say it again. Hey. 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 Yeah. Which is what? A parent. Yeah, a parent. An apparent something. So if you you're on your Klingon ship and you see something approaching, you're not exactly sure what it is, you could say, ah, it's a douche hey. Douche hey. Which means what? A parent ship. ship. Yeah. Douche hey. Douche hey. You'd say something like "Hod, Dujhe Tulu." Captain, ship apparent. There, there is. is. Yeah. So "Hod, Dujhe Tulu." I there is there is apparently a ship. There is what appears to be a ship. Is cool. there an element of sarcasm to um, Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So. The example in the book is Roj Kok, right? So you'd say, give it Roj Kok would be the Federation's so peace. called peace. So called, so, so called peace, yeah, exactly. Cool. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. You got a fun word like Kok Kok, mm -hmm. means a so called robot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Type four. What's that all about? Possessives. Yeah. All right. So somebody list them off to me. We. Which. Which. We. Midge. Me. Dodge. Dodge. Mm -hmm. Dodge. Mm -hmm. Modge and Ma. Mm -hmm. Raj and Ra, Ra. Yep. Charge. Charge. Cha. Yep. Okay. So, what is going on? Why do these four? Oops. Why do these four have two different forms? Both beautiful. For capable uh, beings capable of language. Yeah, so you're seeing, yeah. you're seeing that Klingon has this thing where we have to think about uh, beings capable of language. Um, so, widge, if there's a J at the end of these four, right? Widge, lidge, maj, raj, then these, the thing that it's being attached to is something that is incapable of language. This, this could be desh widge. My arm. Um, this could be Euclidge, your planet. Um, could be Bikmaj, our water. Puchraj, your land. Okay. But then if we have the Karwit at the end instead of a Jai, then it's going to be something that's capable of speech. So, shuv wit, wit, right? Um, this, is, this is a case where both forms of wit show up on the same, uh, on the same word, right? 
but this is a verbal suffix and this is a nominal suffix. Um, thing, yeah, go ahead. One thing that threw me off is uh, widge, widge, maj, praj, uh, all have kind of that cutoff um, for the being capable of speech. If I wanted to say like their mother, would I use chaj? Yep. So, so oh, that's the one that does not cut off the J at the end for a sentient that's critter. That's okay. Right. So, so first person and second person make the distinction. Okay. But third person, as you rightly point out, does not. Okay, you that makes sense. Shoj Chaj, their mother. Shoj Daj, his mother. But Shosh Lit, your mother. Or Shosh Wit. Okay. Emphasizing first and second person helped, like, instantly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, does that make sense? Yeah, everybody's proving that? Okay. Um, don't be stressed about stressed out about learning these all immediately. Um, I know that there's a lot of information that's getting thrown at y'all. Um, it's all good. All right. So what is VOM? These are the other two. This. this. Yeah, this. And? That. that. No. That. Yeah. Proximity. So this is the thing I'm going to say, because of all of the errors, um, if y'all are part of the Facebook Learn Klingon group, of all the errors that I see uh, people make when they first come into the group, one of the largest is that they really, really, really want to use both of these as individual nouns, just like in English. So they say vam which, uh, which I totally understand, um, but it's absolutely not correct. Uh, and in fact, vet is a noun all its own, but it does not mean that, it means- Cockroach. Cockroach, yeah. So, <laughs> So if you say vet the bat, I think that I my immediate thought is you're saying I don't understand the cockroach, right? Um, so it always all, both of these always have to be attached to a noun, which is really um, frustrating for a lot of people who are first uh, learning this, especially if their first language is an Indo-European language, or you know any other language that um, where this and that um, can can be separate words. Um, but in no, Klingon, no, they okay. cannot be separate words. They have to be attached to something. What's that? What's that? Trebo? No, I was sorry. I, I, I don't, uh, I should have turned off the sound. I was just reacting to the thing that came on the chat. Oh, OK, that's fine. Here on the chat on the cockroach lab. Um, so if, you don't, if you're absolutely uncertain about what to say, um, if you're like looking for something to say, just think about like, what is it, what is this, this that I'm saying? Um, and that's just a habit that you're gonna have to um, develop. But there are a couple of things that, um, base things that you can always come back to and say, okay, if I am not exactly sure what it is, then I could say, doch, which means what? Thing. Things. Yeah, so doch farm, doch vet. So this thing, that thing, Dutchram Vyaj. I understand this thing. Dutchvet Vyaj Bet. I don't understand this thing. Right? Um, you could say Mukler Vam. What's a Mukler? It's a sentence? Yeah, sentence. Mukler Vam. Right? Vyaj. Or village bat, right? Or and that's a compound noun too, right? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. So mu means word. Word. And or words. is what? Uh, like a line or a stream. Yeah, line, um, rope line, string. Um, not exactly a string, um, but a rope. I would say, yeah. Um, and this can. This usually can actually also be used for, you know, something like a mukler, 
And oftentimes in real world Klingon, um, I can't speak for, for real Klingons, but <laughs> in real world spoken Klingon, um, you can also hear this talked about like for poetry. So the first line, right? You can even say the poem's first line or the boom the song's first line. Yeah. Okay. We're almost through all of the noun suffixes. Type five. What's all this about? Uh, Caitlin. Uh, I know this is the one that Dodge or not dodge, doc, doc uh -huh. falls into, which is location, but they're not all tied to location. No, these are all what are called syntactic markers. So they're all, they all have to do with like the, what role the, the noun takes in a sentence. Um, and that kind of varies from suffix to suffix. Um, so you brought up, uh, everybody's favorite type five suffix, which is doc, which is a locative suffix. And by the way, if you didn't know this, Mark Okrand, the inventor of the language, oh, excuse me, um, Maltz's friend who revealed the language to us through many years, um, he, he um, received his um, doctorate um, after he wrote his thesis on a language called Mutsen. And everybody always says that Mutsen inspired Klingon. Um, but if you talk to him, he'll say, uh, no, it didn't. Um, but one thing, uh, th there's, there's, there's no link in between Mutsen uh, and Klingon. But there is um, one suffix that is looks, sounds, and functions, has the same function. And it, it is talk, which which just like in Klingon is a locative and well, it's pretty much the same. That's the only borrowing from Mutsen that we have, but it's a pretty common one. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, can anybody tell me another one, another type five suffix? Eh. Eh. Yep. Eh. Is this a signifier? Nope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's emphasis topic. Uh, I'll get into it in a little bit. Um, can anybody tell me another one? Bo Absolutely. Alrighty. What does that mean? Uh, it's also a locative, but it means from. Right, yeah. All right. Somebody else? Mo. Mo. What I heard was moo. You gotta be careful on that one. What does that mean? Do it too because of. Yeah, because of, do too. So we're, we're talking about causation, right? Um, okay, and vag is the last one. Vag, four. Four. Yeah. All right, so locative. Right. We got this little root on here, lock, same as location, um, locate, etc. So locative is talking about place. So when you add gop onto a noun, it means at, near, on, etc. So you say rash gop. So what's a, what's a rash? Table. Yeah, a table. So rash dock, which is one word in Klingon. What is it in English? On the table. Yeah, on the table. Multiple words in English, but one word in Klingon, rash dock, on the table. Um, you have a word like dock, dock, which means what? A dock is a place. At the place. Near the, at the place. place. Yeah, at the place. Um, doc. On the planet? Yeah, on the planet. Booge doc. The ship. Yeah, on in the ship. 
on in app. So notice, you know, it's sort of more nebulous than on in at in English um, because it can kind of mean these things just in general. Um, you know, uh, context is important. So, Vujdak, Vujdak Bekrakhod. So, on this, on the ship, Vujdak Bek Crew. Crew. Ra. Oh, our. No, there, no. Command. And captain. So on the ship, crew command captain, which means the captain commands the crew on the ship. But then you could also say booge dock, um, booge dock botch jog. So at the ship, fire enemy. The enemy fires at the ship. So it can mean a couple of different things. All right, can anybody tell me, can I say Bek Rakhod Gujdak? Not supposed to. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that. That is that is this is an this is un an ungrammatical phrase in Klingon. You're not you're not supposed to say this. In fact, if you say this, I think I think people would understand you. Um, but in English you have the you have the uh, choice to say on the ship, the captain commands the crew or the captain commands the crew on the ship. Not in Klingon. In Klingon, a dock noun is always gonna come before, uh, at, sort of at the beginning of the sentence. It's not as simple as that. There are, other, there are other things that can come before the dock, but just for now, think, okay, dock, beginning of the sentence, and then you can say whatever, okay? Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. So then we have vote, which again is basically the same thing. So if I were to say you vote, the planet, be a planet. Um, can somebody tell me how to say from the man? Lord Vo. Yeah. Lord vote yet, right? So the action is happening in the opposite, towards the opposite direction of the noun that it's attached to. So I walk from the man. I'm walking away from the man. Doc vote yet. I walk away from the house. Or from the, uh, what, did, what did I say? Did I say doc from the place? I was thinking of my next example. Juch which is house, vote jiyit. I walk away from the house. Okay. Can I, can I just say juch? Juch is a bit different. Juch is home. Juch kach is house. Mm, yeah. It's literally a home house. Yeah. Home building. Home building, yeah. Thank you. Okie doke. Oh. What's the word for mistake in Klingon? Chag. How would you say y'all's mistake? Kahlich. Kahlich. So I said y'all. Raj. So. Raj. Raj. Chag. 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 Raj. How would I say because of y'all's mistake? Yeah, that's exactly it. Because of y'all's mistake. I'm angry. I'm mad. And this is actually one where you could put it on either end. You could say, because of your mistake, because of y'all's mistake, or this way. Okay. Cool. Um, so. Uh, one question, just a second. 
would not be a G kech, a V kech, not instead of G? No, because there's no object in that sentence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because of it's not object. Okay. Yeah, this this is not an object. This is just think of it as like an addition to the phrase. It's like you're adding something on. But it's not an it's not an object, no. Okay. Vag. This one's a little bit funky. So shokhvag jeshuv. So what's shokh? You. Yeah. You singular. Vag is four, right? J I, no no object. Shuv, fight. So what does this phrase mean? I'll fight for you. I fight for you. I fight for you. Okay. Simple enough. That's not I fight to obtain you. That's I fight to help you or whatever, right? Because I fight for you could be I'm fighting to attain you in English. Yes. Um, I, could, I could see it meaning that in Klingon, but um, I could see it meaning that in Klingon. It, it could mean that. Um, but uh, maybe more what you would say was would be kashuk mech kishuv. Um We'll get into what mech is basically the verb version of of bad. We'll get into that next next lesson. Um, okay, so vag um, can also mean can also mark the indirect object of a sentence. Um, so shoch vag yech vinob. So what does this phrase mean? Can anybody tell me? I give you a tribble. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a tribble. So what is the object of the phrase? It is yech, that's the direct object. Um, and then the indirect object is you, right? I'm giving it to you, so vag. I mean, literally what you're saying is I give it for you, right? But it can also be used for um, an indirect object. And the word for an indirect object in Klingon is vikhop, vikhop, that's an, Indirect object and in a direct object is an of my direct object. Of my. Fit hope. Of my. Cool. All right, did we go through all of those? Oh, we did not cover everybody's biggest headache. Ah! There's a topicalizer. So let's say I'm walking down the street. And I come across my, my good friend, Hul, and I say, Hul, um, uh, let's think. Um, um, I could say to him, Hul, um, say, Hul, aplo, da, keng, a. Are you carrying a box? And he could say, So in English, you would say, so this is, are you carrying a box? And he'd say, no. I'm carrying a book. No, I'm not carrying a box, I'm carrying a book. Right, so you, 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 you would change the intonation of, of, the, of the noun in, in English, but in Klingon, you add the suffix, which is a topicalizer, and it sort of, sort of draws attention to, um, to the noun, right? Um, okay, we're also gonna get to the other function of it in just a second, um, but does that make sense to everybody? Okay, and then there's another function as well. You could say, pak et, And the meaning of it, when you use it at the beginning of a sentence, and then you put this comma here, and then you say the sentence, um, it's like, as for the book, it, whatever. So in this sent sentence, I'm saying, pak et, ich, as for the book, it's beautiful, right? So I could say, miloch um, lij, moch, miloch lij. 
Milor means picture. Lidge is what? Your. Your, your picture is moch. Ugly. Uh, your picture is ugly. Pak. Ah. Ich. So your picture is ugly. As for the book, it's beautiful. All right? <laughs> That's the other use of it. Okay. So we're going to talk about the other use of at. But before we do that, let's talk about pronouns. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go first. for it. Uh, it's actually um, concerning the vad. Uh, in that example, shoch vad jich vinom, would it be correct to just say jich kanom? Or is, is it incorrect? It's correct. Um, let, let's not, we're not going to go over um, that. What you're describing is what's called the prefix trick. Um, that's not a canonical name. That is a name that it was given um, as kind of a joke. <laughs> but the, it's called the prefix trick. Um, and what it is, is you have um, a prefix, a verbal prefix, which takes on, um, which in addition to saying what the what the subject and the direct object are can also convey um, the uh, indirect object. So in the example that you said, you said, yich kanob. This is a perfectly fine way of saying, I give you the triple. What, what you're really saying is triple, um, I, I you give, right? Because normally, kanob means I give you, um, which hopefully you're not giving people. Uh, <laughs> but um, you know, when it's clear that yich is the object, the direct object, then the ka um, sort of becomes the indirect object. If that makes any sense, you'd also say pinob. We give it to you, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's right, so a pronouns. Can somebody shout them out for me? Yeah. Shoch. Shoch. Shach. Shach. How about you give me the singular first? Rach. 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 Say it again. Rach. 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 Good. Chach. Here, keep on doing the same. Oh, right. Uh, oh. All right. Let's pause there. So, Jich. Uh, tell me what all of these mean. Uh, I, you, he, sh okay, I, me, yeah, right, me. Eshoch, you, uh, singular, of course. Rach, he, she, och, it. Yeah, good. Yeah. So English has, and a lot of different um, Western uh, Indo European languages have this problem where um, we're now coming to a realization that uh, he, she is a bit confining. But rach is really uh, open and it can mean he or she. It just means, you know, Klingon does not, oops, Klingon does not make this distinction for gender. It makes the distinction for capable of speech. So this has led to um, at the kep ah, you know, at when it, at like um, you know icebreakers now, it's very common for name tags to have um, your name and then the pronouns that you prefer. Um, well, at the kep ah, um, since there's only one possible pronoun for um, beings capable of speech, it's very common for everybody to put on their uh, name tag rach rach. Right? <laughs> so um, if you ever go to uh, a Klingon meeting and people are putting that on their name tags, that's what that's all about. It's sort of like a fun way of making fun of English. Um, okay, so Jeff. Do you if the Kep Ah is going to occur this year? I hope so. I hope so. I hadn't heard. That's, sorry, that's an aside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Um, if it doesn't, I'll be very sad. Um, okay, somebody tell me what the plural ones are. 
about Jim? Uh, put it up here. Click. Here, let's go in order. Okay. So first, second, third person. Okay. Uh, Ma. 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 Yeah. Okay. Next. Cha. So in order. Klich. Klich. Okay. Okay. All right. Next we have Chach. Chach. And then what's the last one? Bich. Bich. Yeah. And what do all these mean? What's mach? Us. Yeah, we us. We or us. Klich. Klich. Y'all. 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 Sorry, y'all. Georgia Nanjich. I am a Georgian. Uh, okay. Chach. They, them. Um, yes. Uh, for beings who can speak. And bich, non-sentient objects. LA just means language. I don't have enough room to write language, so that's what LA means. Okay. And then they, and L, no language. <laughs> okay. So these are all the pronouns. Mach, klich, chach, bich. These are all the in the plural. Okay. Um, and you'll notice up here that I have written Georgia on jich. So Georgia is Georgia, U.S. state. Okay. Nan is inhabitant of or of. Yeah, inhabitant, just inhabitant. Okay. All right, and then I've written jich. But wait, where is the word to be? Jich. Jich. Yeah, it's jich. Me. Klingon does not have a word for to be. To be does not exist. Um, so in, uh, in the Klingon version of Hamlet, what is it? Tach. Anybody know? Tach. 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 Yeah. Tach. 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 No, I'm not going to do the whole thing. But um, so, to continue or not to continue. And the reason why it's that way is because there's no word for to be. Because all of these pronouns carry the meaning of to be if they're acting as a verb. So, you are a Federation person. We are Klingons, right? Or, Klingon Pukmach. Um, desh du bich, uh, um, uh, right? It is a thing, okay. So, what happens if I want to say, um, this thing is this thing is a ship? What would I say? Uh, you would say. Uh, um, uh, that's right okay so here is the next meeting i'm going to try to speed up because uh we're getting towards time okay um so this is the other use of et. um et is used in constructions where you're saying one thing is another thing right so when one thing equals another thing, you're going to use at on the second noun, OK? So the way that I like to think of it is you say, right? So it is a ship, as for the ship, or as, as for this thing, right? That's a good way of thinking about it. It's, 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 it's a little weird at first to add that at, and a lot of people forget the at, um, but you're going to have to remember it. Um, and people will understand you if you say, but it's, it's not grammatical. Um, there is a dialect of Klingon where the at is not necessary. 
So in that dialect, you would say but um, we're not learning that dialect, we're learning standard Klingon and in standard Klingon, you're always gonna have to say the A. So let me give you a couple of other examples. The Romulan is a person, right? So is a he, she is a person. Um, so they are traitors as for the Vulcans. The Vulcans are traitors. Okay. Uh, they are, so bich is for beings not capable of speech. Yich, they are tribbles as for these animals. Okay, makes sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? No? Not a question, just, just, just the thought that this is actually very hard for me when I speak to remember to put the, oh, the order, like the, the what is being described, like I usually turn it up. Yeah, it's wrong. yeah, for sure. If Here, I might speaking. Let's try to get a phrase that's very useful stuck in our heads, okay. So, nuk och punglij et. What is your name? Right? Nuk och, what, it, what is it? Punglij et, as for your name. And then what would be the response? Jik och. Robert. It would be whatever your name is. So, X. So, desh du och punglij et. Oh, yeah. There we go. Cool. Um, I was, I was to say, hot the box off from my chair. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna go one by one, and you're all. I'm gonna ask each one of you. It's gonna be a bit silly because I'm gonna I'm gonna call on your name, and then I'm gonna ask you what your name is. But we're gonna do it that way, and then you're gonna respond. Um, you know, like Caitlin nuk och punglich a ah Caitlin och punglich a. All right. Cool. So Caitlin nuk och punglich a. Caitlin or Pongwich E. Oh. Oh. Pong. Pongwich E. Match. Kreb O. Nuk Och Pongwich E. E Kreb O Och Pongwich E. Match. Dokval. Nuk Och Pongwich E. Dokval. Oh. Pongwich E. Match. Hatibach. Nuk Och Pongwich E. Hatibach. Och Pongwich E. Much. Chiago, nuk och pongwich e. Chiago, och pongwich e. Much. Raikle, nuk och pongwich e. Raikle, och pongwich e. Boon, much ka. All right. Um, before we leave, I'm going to give you all a couple of different. Um, I'm going to give you two sentences that uh, I think would be really useful um, to have um, in the f going into the future. So the first. I'm going to give you a couple of actually. All right. The first one is Jiyaj, which means what? I understand. I understand. I understand. Next I understand. one is. I do not I understand. Jiyaj Bet. Jiyaj Bet. Everybody say it. Jiyaj Bet. Jiyaj Bet. Jiyaj Bet. I heard a Yaj. 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 And the last one is a two parter. So, but try to remember it. Karel Venech. Karel Venech. Karel. So, this is Karel Venech. Desh du Karel Venech. Karel. I want to ask you a question. Rel is ask a question, and the object is the person that you're asking it to. Ka is a prefix meaning. I do it to you. And then vinech means I want it. I want to ask you a question. Karel vinech. Okay. All right. I'm good. Cool. Um, okay. So right now my Kindle has died. 
So um, I'm going to send out an email later tonight um, with this week's homework. Um, send any message, messages to me um, if you're confused. Um, and uh, yeah, keep on doing Memrise. Um, keep on learning new vocabulary. Um, I think we're not gonna go for three playing on the easy-ish lessons this week, but we'll do another two. And then review the ones that you've already watched, right? Keep on getting it stuck inside your head, right? Um, for people who could not attend, I'll put this up on the web. Um, and uh, they can watch it there. And um, yeah, sounds good. Does anybody have any questions? Are we reading a chapter? Yes, we will. And I'll put that out. Um, okay. But, um, but it won't be four. Okay. Um, um, it will be, the reason why I, I don't want to put it out right now is because I'm not sure yet if um, I want everybody to go through all of four because, uh, you know, nouns, there's only five, but um, for ver five noun suffixes, but not five noun type suffixes. There we go. Suffix types. Yeah, can't speak English today. Um, but for verbs, there's nine plus rovers. So there's really 10 um, suffix types. Yes, don't vowel. Is there some place you can recommend, maybe on the web or whatever, that we can listen to just to hear spoken Klingon? I know Jen, you, Jen, you have some, Jen Bomb's got some songs. Yeah. But is there, I mean, you can hear Hamlet's soliloquy if you search for it, but where's a good place just to listen to Klingon, just to get used to hearing it. So John Harness, whose name is Archa. Uh, yeah, Duolingo is good. Du Duolingo is good. Um, yeah, but you got to work through Duolingo. You can't just sit and listen to Duolingo. That's true. Um, so John Harness, um, also known as Archa, um, he, many years ago, not many, but some years ago, put out onto, do you know what SoundCloud is? Mm -hmm. So SoundCloud, um, search for Klingon on SoundCloud, and he has recordings of advanced um, speakers just chatting at the 22nd kep -ah. Um And you can hear uh, speak, you can hear um, uh, you can hear Hunchuit speak. You can hear uh, Kov speak. Kankor um, Chod and Ishku have a conversation, and then there's like a whole group of advanced speakers who are chatting together. Another thing, um, with, uh, which is another project of mine, um, is uh, a podcast called Pet Bill, and that's a newscast, um, and they're usually they're like five minute newscasts. Um, and then another one is Oak Shown, which is another pod podcast that I do. Um, so these are all things that you can find on the web. I also have um, audiobooks on my YouTube channel. So like audio versions of things that I've translated. Um, so that's an example where you could have the text uh, and, um, and the sound. Um, so in the year 2889 has a sound version um Shormach, which is a short story that i wrote has a has an has an audio version um the first five chapters of candide have an audio version so which might be a bit advanced um and don't worry if you're not understanding everything immediately that's okay like um right now i'm learning spanish and i don't understand everything um, but I'm listening through, um, you know, really simple audiobooks. Like I'm listening to Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban right now. I don't understand everything, but, um, you know, it's helping me to, you know, I can pick out a word every now and again, like, oh, that means that, or that means that, um, you know, it's just good. It's good to practice, you know, get your ear accustomed to it. Right. Just hear the phonemes. That's why I say you just to, yeah. to to listen to something, even if you don't understand it, yeah. just to drill yeah. the sounds into your head. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Cool. Um, great. Thank Anybody you. else? Any other questions? Oh, sorry, I cut you off. I said thank you. Yeah. 
Great. All right. Well, let's reconvene next week. And uh, thank you for a great class, everybody. Thank you.